Hi, welcome to this extra special Science Sunday with the North Carolina Aquarium at Pine Knoll Shores. My name is Wendy and I'm the education curator coming to you live from this spring day. As Mother Nature wakes up from winter dormancy or a period of inactivity for animals and plants, most animals are coming out with one thing on their mind. I bet that thing might be kind of important to you today as well. Not these, not these, but these. As spring arrives in the Northern Hemisphere, most animals are waking up, becoming more active, and seeking out good habitats or natural spaces for giving birth to their young. There are so many animals that need such a wide variety of habitats, from grasslands to forests, to estuaries, to rivers, from mud bogs to mountaintops. It's important that we humans protect wild spaces to share with the animals that we love. And most of the animals are going to be giving birth through the process of egg laying. And when I say most animals, I truly mean most animals. From insects and spiders, to amphibians and reptiles, and of course, fish and birds, most species reproduce through the process of egg laying. There are even five species of Australian mammals that lay eggs instead of giving birth to live young. Today, we are going to explore some eggs from different species of animals and learn what types of eggs you may be able to discover in your own backyard or neighborhood. First, let's talk about the tiny eggs of insects. There are millions, yes, millions of species of insects on the planet, and they each use different strategies for laying eggs. However, they do have some things in common. Insects do not provide parental care for their young. Instead, the female will almost always lay her eggs on or near a food source, like a plant, and then she moves on. With millions of species, there are also millions of strategies for egg laying. Insects will always go through metamorphosis or different life stages after they hatch before becoming an adult. Often, insects will have special adaptations for depositing eggs in specific locations, like monarch butterflies that lay their eggs on milkweed plants. When the larvae hatch out, they have an immediate meal to eat. If you would like to help out some insects like monarch butterflies, you can plant a butterfly garden at home by providing plants for them to lay their eggs and pollen from the flowers for the butterflies to eat. From ants to bees to dragonflies and stick bugs, there are so many interesting things to learn about insect eggs. I challenge you to find out more about your favorite bug and how they manage to make more bug babies. Spiders are different from insects in that they often lay their eggs in egg sacs made of silk spun by the spider. These egg sacs may contain a few or thousands of individual eggs. Some spiders attach the egg sac to their webs, while others, like the wolf spider, may carry the egg sacs on their backs, or some other species carry the egg sacs in their mouths. Spiders have some truly amazing adaptations and provide us with a much needed ecosystem service, pest control. It is estimated that spiders catch and eat up to 880 million tons of insects every year. Amphibians, such as frogs, toads, salamanders, and newts, always lay their eggs in or near the water. This protects the eggs. Because their eggs lack a hard shell, the water helps the fertilized eggs develop and it also helps them avoid drying out. Amphibian eggs are usually laid in masses of hundreds of eggs that will hatch and those larvae will go through metamorphosis, those different life stages, before they reach adulthood. Whereas reptile eggs are generally always laid on land, in a nest, underground, built by the female. The babies will hatch looking like miniature adults. Reptile eggs vary in shape and size from the ping pong ball sized turtle eggs to oblong shaped snake eggs. Reptiles generally lay their eggs and then leave them to hatch. There are some exceptions like our local North Carolina alligators where the mothers build their nest on the banks of waterways 
and they will guard the eggs and continue to watch over their babies for up to a year. Here in North Carolina, it is important that we understand that we have to share these spaces with the animals that we love and we need to keep our distance. And always take extra precaution with children and pets when walking by bodies of water, even small ponds, as there could be an alligator in there that you cannot see. And yes, even fish, marine invertebrates, and sharks lay eggs too. With so many different species of fish and sharks in the ocean, you can imagine that there would be a huge variety of eggs and egg laying strategies. Living in the water, it can be difficult to know if it's spring or fall, is it time to lay my eggs? So fish tend to lay their eggs when the water temperature or the chemistry of the water changes or shifts. These changes trigger the chemicals and hormones in the bodies of the animals and tell them it's time to lay your eggs. Some fish release thousands of eggs into the water column. Some fish attach their eggs to underwater plants, shells, or even in the sand. You may have found some egg casings on the beach while beachcombing of our skates and rays that live in North Carolina waters. We call these egg cases mermaid purses, and they are always great finds for local beachcombers. Even our marine invertebrates like crabs and whelks that you may see in the touch pools at the aquarium lay eggs to reproduce. Whelks lay their eggs in long strings with individual compartments that contain hundreds of miniature baby whelks that look identical to the adult in each compartment. Blue crab females will carry their eggs in the underside of their body in their carapace. These egg masses are orange and red and they resemble a sponge you might use in your kitchen. Here at the aquarium, we have a conservation project where we collect eggs from our habitats, like the living shipwreck habitat. And we raise the baby eggs in a system known as molars, or modular larval rearing system. This effort of collecting our own eggs and raising the fry to adult fish helps us avoid wild species being caught for display in our aquarium. We are able to then share these animals with other zoos and aquariums so that they too can display animals grown at the North Carolina Aquarium. We all know birds lay eggs. Birds are some of the most amazing egg layers and nest builders. The parents care for those eggs around the clock, keeping them safe and warm, and continue to care for their young until they are able to fly away on their own. Bird eggs come in so many different colors, shapes, and sizes, from teeny tiny hummingbird eggs to giant ostrich eggs. But each egg has a hard shell that the baby bird must crack open in order to hatch. Speaking of baby birds, if you happen to see one on the ground this spring, be sure and leave that baby bird alone. If you can find the nest that the bird fell or flew out of, then you can certainly place that baby bird back into the nest and its parents will continue to take care of it. Contrary to popular belief, most birds don't have a highly developed sense of smell. So if you pick the bird up and put it back in the nest, the parents will still continue to care for it. I hope that you're all enjoying some special eggs today. There's so much we can learn about animals and what they need to survive and reproduce from clean open spaces to healthy forests, clean rivers, estuaries, and oceans, from mud bogs to mountaintops. There is so much to learn about how we can help animals. In fact, there's something you can do to help animals right now. If you head on over to globaldealfornature.org to protect more ocean and land habitat, not only for us, but for animals in the future. Enjoy your eggs today. I certainly hope some of them are chocolate.